Hey there, food fans. Welcome back to the Food for Thought Cast with me, your host, Melissa Reagan, and my co-host with the most, Chef Stephen Gonzalez. What's up, buddy? Hello. <laughs> Today we are joined by Angela Standifer. Did I say that correctly? You did. Be clapping. Yeah. I meant to, I meant to ask you before we started recording, and I completely forgot. So <laughs> I just took a you stab at it. it. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Angela, you know, like likes the show and she asked if she could be on. Thank you said, very much for that. Yeah, so you're welcome. Yeah. This is like a banner day for us. It's like, woohoo, let's do it. So yeah. Angela, you get to go first. What's the most amazing thing you ate this week? Oh, um, let's see. I made a sweet potato and blueberry hash with Whoa. some fried eggs nice. over like an avocado toast kind of thing with a chili oil. That was that was my breakfast for like most course. of the week. <laughs> you put my high, whole, huh? Yeah, you put my whole day of eating to shame. Wow. <laughs> That's incredible. I love that. <laughs> I never thought about putting blueberries in sweet potato hash. That sounds amazing. It and, does actually, yeah. Yeah, it also has some Granny Smith apples and then some ginger and cinnamon. So wow. it's kind of, kind of a go-to, you know, when I don't want to have to make be making breakfast every day, just make one one big batch of it and and then reheat it only right oh oh it's ginger. only that's awesome that sounds amazing <laughs> and i think ginger is like one of my favorite kind of unsung yeah. heroes of the spice world as it were sorry i had the wrong one <laughs> i was like oh no we're too good. Uh, oops. yeah ginger and ginger with sweet potatoes is incredible oh yeah most yeah, definitely so, it's so good what about you steve well, today we actually tried a new restaurant called Pura Vida in, here in uh, Midland, and we had their octopus tacos. And normally, whenever you go somewhere, they offer octopus. It's not that good, but this was amazing. I mean, like it was just huge parts of the tentacle and avocados, some pickled uh, shallots, some lime. Oh, it was amazing. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Angela, do you eat octopus? Have you ever had it before? I have, I think I've had like a pasta that had just the, the ink in it, but not actual octopus. Oh, uh, I love it. it. Absolutely I love, love it. And are you, would you be open to trying it? Or is it like I, a, a no-go? <laughs> the, the, the little tentacles are kind of. Oh, you know. get past that. Once you get past that, it's amazing. <laughs> totally <laughs> worth it. Yes. I'll, I'll never say never then. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Got it. Um, I had some sweet potatoes too. So I, I had the chance to go downtown and try a place here in, in Raleigh called Crawford and Sons. And I had um, rabbit dumplings with um, sweet potato gnocchi and sorghum biscuits. And they were like sprinkled with sea salt. And it was incredible. Like I tried to lick the design off the plate. It's really delicious. <laughs> So okay, this will be my first uh, thing to to learn today because I always say yeah. something from you. What is sorghum? Sorghum. Sorghum is um, related to molasses. Sorghum is in the grain family. Oh, okay. They, they distill it to make a syrup. So it's kind of in a biscuit application, it just kind of adds like some sweetness, or you can dry it and grind it into flour, which I kind of suspect is what they do. So, yeah. Okay. It's like their way of making a regional biscuit, as it were, probably charged. Sounds for good, though. For it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Totally yeah. good. But yeah, it's a gluten free grain, and you can use it to make um, flour, or, you know, uh, hot cereal from that same flour. You can <laughs> use the grains whole. Um, and then it, also, you can, it's kind of like a cousin to molasses. So yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, I love rabbit. Do you like rabbit, Steve? It's good. It's a little have bit you, of work, but I like it. Have you had rabbit, Angela? I have not. Is it is it similar to any other kind of texture of a, of a protein? I like to tell people it's like an animal that's made completely of dark meat chicken. Oh, I yeah. think I would, I would, think I would like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like an entire comparison. woodland creature made up of chicken thighs. That's how I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> I prefer chicken thighs when I'm cooking with chicken. Same. Same. Chicken breast yeah. hurts my soul a lot. <laughs> I don't like oh, yeah. it. I know it makes good chicken strips, but 
<laughs> it is inferior in flavor and moisture and everything else. Mm -hmm. so, and it's expensive. It's just like, I don't pay more for this thing that doesn't taste as good and it's dry. So it makes me kind of sad. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Well, um, not too long ago, Angela reached out to see if she'd come on the show. And I thought it was an amazing idea. And our schedules being what they were, it was like a long time ago. Um, and so uh, really, really happy to have you here. Um, very, very honored that you would ask. And thank you so much for listening to the podcast yes, and supporting the show. Like, I, yes. I love that so much. <laughs> You guys, you guys kept me company on many trips to Sioux Falls, South Dakota, which is about an hour from where I live. But well, I was thank going, you. when I uh, was going daily for radiation treatments last year, we uh, you spent many mornings with me on my on my trip over there. So I'm glad, glad to have you guys along in, in my car. <laughs> Most and, and congratulations. <laughs> yeah, thanks. So congratulations for yes. making it through that and yes. that yes. <laughs> yeah. amazing well angela i have a, a question for you so you recently had a mini chopped style competition with your with your uh, family can you tell us about it oh yeah i my was gonna be um having dinner with some friends of mine and so i just loaded two shopping carts from you know full of food from my um fridge and my freezer and brought everything over and I said all right what are we gonna make <laughs> I had Brussels sprouts and and some we ended up uh com combining and doing like a Mexican sort of meal um and left the Brussels sprouts for a later time <laughs> oh, and here I was gonna ask did you make your uh, sweet potato hash with blueberries because that sounds award-winning right off the bat to be honest <laughs> Um, and then one of the dishes we ended up making that wasn't really Mexican inspired, but uh, Melissa gave me the idea to put, um, to make a caprese salad with my cantaloupe. And so we had a, the cantaloupe and burrata cheese, and I had a little balsamic glaze that we put on that. It was pretty tasty. I've never tried cantaloupe that way before. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think you had like maybe an a underripe cantaloupe and you were asking yeah. what you could do with it. And so, yeah. yeah, Steve, I don't know if you've ever done that, but I've used underripe melon in the place of tomatoes before. Um, I haven't. I've never done that before. But... Most of the time it's the other way around. If I don't have like good tomatoes and I want something uh -huh. that's kind of like caprese, you know, um, I, I like to use other things like cucumber or melon or things like that. Anything crunchy. Interesting. Yeah. Firm, I can see that. Totally. Yeah. So Angela, who won? Um, it was not really a competition. It was more of a like combined effort of what can we make with all of the odds and ends that I have in my fridge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I he, like hand that. he handled the grilling part and, and made a salsa. Um, and I handled the inside part. I, okay. I, I think at the end you ended up being the winner because you got to do like a fridge and fridge and freezer and pantry clean out. Yeah. <laughs> and then you didn't have For to take sure. all of like the, the oddball <laughs> ingredients back home. Mm -hmm. So you're exactly. the winner. I want somebody <laughs> that can do that at my house. I have like a bunch of things that don't go together. <laughs> right. So, Same here. My, my chef brain's tired. <laughs> so, Angela, did you grow up cooking? Um, yeah, I did. My mom has always been a good cook. And so I kind of learned from her and, uh, I keep meaning to, uh, one of these years, learn how to make yulakaka, which is Norwegian Christmas bread. Um, bless, bless you. It's like, it's like a whole day's event of, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Wow. of making that. But um, yeah, the next one of these years, I should learn how to make bread. <laughs> My goodness. What, what makes the bread special? You said it's Norwegian? Uh, yep, Norwegian. It wow. has, I think it's basically just like a, like a um, fruitcake kind of bread. It has that, mm -hmm. those little pieces inside it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then um, it's braided um, with nice. a, just a, like a little frosting on it. And then our favorite part when we were kids was getting to help make the little designs with the, I don't know. I don't even know what they were. Like maybe those little cherries 
like yeah. candied cherries. Uh huh. Yeah, like a dried fruit and stuff. Yep. Is love, that like your your fruit. family heritage, uh, Norwegian? Yes. Yep. For the most part. Mm. Oh wow. So you'll have to share with me because I have no idea, you know, like what traditional is or what kind of dishes you would have grown up making, you know? Um, I have an, my uncle can make some pretty good lefse, which is the really that thin, you know, like potato bread or, or whatever. He's okay. got a big, gr like a grill that you make it on. Um mm -hmm. I know that lutefisk is Norwegian, I yes. think, I'm pretty sure, but I've never tried it. <laughs> that's Lut not. Lutefisk that's is not a part of my fish that's preserved in lots, yeah. Stephen. That's what like, I thought it was. Yeah. It's like, I was yeah. going to ask. Uh huh. Yeah. Wow. Lutefisk. I would try it too. I would totally try it, you know? <laughs> I mean, I, I need to try it at some point, but it's not, I'm not super excited about it. No offense. It's just one of those things None I've never. <laughs> I've never had a desire. I'm always just like, that's on the list, but I just, I'm not in a hurry. <laughs> so. so is Norwegian food uh, typically very heavy? It sounds like it, it, it kind of sounds like it is, but I'm sure that's not all heavy dishes, right? Um, really the only one that I remember is the, the, the bread that my mom would make Okay. at Christmas time. So I, I can't really say that we had a lot of other Norwegian you know, I live in the Midwest, so okay. a lot of meat and potato, kind of just traditional gotcha. dishes. Yeah. I feel, yeah. yeah, because like when we think of like, like the winter, we think just cold. And of course, being in Texas for myself, it's typically in the 80s, 90s, you know, around December. Right. So that's why, you know, I'm thinking heavier dishes. But again, I'm just thinking that, you know. Mm hmm. So I, I could be thinking of completely the wrong food heritage, Angela, but um, in Norwegian cooking, is that like a lot of pickled and preserved like fish and things like that as well? I might I be think, thinking of Swedish. I think so. <laughs> I did not, I did not Google my, 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 the heritage. No, that's okay. of my, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm. The like, history, right? Yeah. yeah so, I, so I'm it not sounds the like best person to be asking those sorts no, of no no that's okay i mean i was just wondering if you grew up with any like any yeah. other like super traditional aspects um steve you know lefsa it's it's like a flatbread so okay. that big griddle you know kind of like a, mm -hmm. i mean i wouldn't want to say it was a norwegian tortilla but i think it's probably you can it's close it's there you know, like pita <laughs> or tortilla yeah right? so yeah i've always wanted to learn how to make it there's an influencer i I follow called that Midwestern mom. Are you familiar with her, Angela? No. She makes like all of those like Minnesota jello salads that have like the marshmallows, like all oh. that Midwestern, like yes. hot dish and all that stuff. But they have a lot of like Lutheran churches and um, that tradition around there that will make like lefse. And it's like a family activity. And so yeah. she's done some reels and some shorts about making lefse. And, um, it looks like an arduous process so like multiple hands families come together like use the whole table you know so, yeah yeah absolutely so what's your favorite thing to cook hmm i'd probably say pasta like you okay. can't go wrong with macaroni and cheese i agree with pasta yeah you cannot. What? What's? Uh, do you ever like do anything to jazz it up, or do you have just a standard like favorite that you a favorite recipe that you use? Um, I kind of. Well, I would say mushrooms. If I could like add anything to a dish, it would always be mushrooms. Oh, nice. Do yes. you now? Do you uh, saute your mushrooms and add them, or or what is it? How do you apply them? Um, I would saute them first, and then. Yeah. Yep, and then throw them in. Nice. Many... If I'm, if I don't want to make like the whole pasta, I'll just like go buy the quick little one that's made already, and then. <laughs> but at mm -hmm. least, at least got to add the mushrooms to it. <laughs> yeah, if you kind of like, like zhuzh, it, zhuzh it up with yep, the mushrooms, exactly. so you don't feel like going all the way from scratch. Mm -hmm. So if you that's... make mac, if you make mac and cheese from scratch, like, do you is it more than one cheese, or do you like Velveeta, or like what is it? Um, you know, I'm not going to hate on the Velveeta. So I'm, you know, <laughs> no, you can't. No, it's good. No, please don't. <laughs> and, uh, 
always have fun with Velveeta, but um, like it just depends on the, my mood, I suppose. I would say I I like um, a g- Gouda would be a good one. Oh yes, yeah. Who doesn't like Gouda? Yeah. Awesome. And then, um, of course, you got to be like when you're talking about it. When you're adding your sautéed mushrooms, you got to be fancy. Oh, the umami of the mushrooms just <laughs> takes us to whole. You know, that's what I would do probably. For sure. So, yeah. Steve's mushroom shenanigans. <laughs> Um, I think mac and cheese, like I, I always get excited making mac and cheese at the house because if I have like three or four different kinds of cheeses, then it's kind of like the fridge clean out. So, yes. and then you yeah. kind of, then you kind of learn what you like most together, you know? Yes. So. I'm not, I'm not a fan of blue cheeses as much, but. Oh no. I do like blue cheese. Yeah. Or goat cheese. I can't. Oh, I oh, love no. goat cheese. Yeah, oh, no. I, know, I know. I was going to probably. Well, Angela, it, it was there. very nice chatting with you today. <laughs> and she's done. <laughs> it's nice, nice podcast. Good. So, Angela, I have a loaded question. How did you hear about the podcast? Um, Just be by being friends with Melissa. I, uh, yeah. What? what? And so. Wait. Uh, yeah, we've been Facebook friends for like ten years and yes. met for <laughs> at, like one time and one the one time. Yep. Yeah. yeah I think you were so. you were talking about the Minnesota State Fair versus the Texas State Fair, and you're like, I have one person I know in, in <laughs> Minnesota who like disagree with my answer. They're like, which state fair is better? I know I've I've never been to the Texas State Fair, so I. I don't have how ironic. Like, I've never been to the Minnesota State that. Fair. Well, come yes. on up. <laughs> the, the Minnesota one is is well, it's funny you say that because so then that just means I know two people in Minnesota. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's on my list. Like I want to go and I want to go have those cookies. Like I, it's all I keep hearing about. Yeah, Martha's cookies are pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. We got I say as I out there now. Yeah. cried into my Duncan Hines keto cookie mix this weekend, just like Nah, not, not <laughs> as good, but it's fine. <laughs> so, yeah, um, yeah, I yeah. can't wait. Now we got yeah. So when does this take place? So that way we can start making plans. It's usually over Labor Day. It starts like the last part of August and goes through Labor Day. Nice. Okay. Right. Now we know we've got a year to plan this all out. Yeah. I like it. You know, the Texas State Fair is going on right now. Oh, it's like in the in the middle of it, yep. right? which seems late to be having yeah. a state fair to me. But I know that. Yeah, like I mean, down there it's that's normal. well, it's it's interesting. Now I don't live in the state anymore. Uh, some friends of mine texted yesterday that they were there and they sent me a picture of what they were eating. And I was like, oh, I really forgot that was happening. Uh, there is like a North Carolina state fair, but compared to Minnesota and Texas, it looks quaint. So <laughs> it doesn't. It's like, oh, that's cute. <laughs> and in all fairness, um, yeah. it's pretty much summer slash fall year round, so we can have it kind of late, you know. Oh, Steve. that's true. It's it's true. <laughs> I I so, only speak facts. So, my friend sent me a picture of what they were eating. You guys can see what you think about this. It was a sandwich. It was a pulled pork sandwich with bacon, collard greens, and cheese with glazed donuts as the bread. What what say you? <laughs> oh, that sounds like <laughs> like an epigastric nightmare. Rush, <laughs> crush that sandwich so hard. <laughs> I would crush it, Steven? No, you lost you me at the donuts. Really, you totally lost me. Yeah. yeah, it sounded so good up until you got to the bread. I think the it'd be bread good on, aspect on a biscuit. Oh, totally. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. Or a pretzel roll or potato but I feel bun. Or... That sweetness just wouldn't tie into all that. You know what I'm saying? I think it must be the gimmick because everything else kind of goes together. So that has to be like whatever they were using to be yeah. like, we're, di- we're different. We're special. I'm <laughs> sorry, but I had one of those uh, those smash burgers once with like the donuts for, for the bread. And there's a reason why I've only had it once in my life because it mm. just didn't work for me, you know? Mm. Well, I have to say, I'm in the home of Krispy Kreme now, and I had to pick up three dozen of them the other day for an event, and I just, uh, I actually was really proud of myself. Like, I didn't eat one at all, 
Um, and but smelling them was just like I remember why I don't like these. They're too sweet. Sorry, no offense to if everybody likes. You could do one, but that's about it. That's as far as I go. You know, oh, yeah. any more than that, you're just like, I ugh, no, can't. Angela, what's the craziest thing you've ever eaten? Oh, the craziest thing I've ever eaten. Hmm. Like, do you see? Oh, or I do. I tried chicken hearts. Ooh. At, at one of those Brazilian like carnival. Oh, yes. nice. Yeah, and that was the the special, you know, delicacy of the month was chicken hearts. <laughs> did you like it? I did actually. Oh, were, so good. Yeah. yeah, the texture was like not too strange or anything. So and yes. yeah, the flavor was just yeah, it was good. Uh, chicken heart to me is like one of those the only you know, awful, like the O-F-F-A-L, that doesn't taste kind of like liver. <laughs> Everything else kind of skews toward liver unless it's like sweet bread or heart. And so, uh, to me... One of my yeah. co-workers was yes. talking about making liver and onions. I'm like, I... <laughs> it sounds like you just... It doesn't sound like something I would want to eat, but she was just... She had such, like, fond memories of her mom making it over the years that that was something that she enjoyed. I'm like, okay. Nice. Liver and onion and mac and cheese for me, please. <laughs> that's a that's a feast right there, you know. <laughs> I love it. Well, Angela, do you look for weird things to eat, or are you like always like eager to try exotic things, or do you have do you find that you're you know you kind of just stick with what you like, or what's that look like for you? I there's an Ethiopian restaurant that opened in our town. We have a pretty diverse town for being yes, in the middle of the uh, plains. And I have been meaning to go try it. My friend said it's it was fantastic when she's mm. been there. So I, that is, it's on, it's I on the love. list. I yeah. love it. Sounds like I'll, you've I'll got some homework. Once. Yeah, you have some homework and you need to report back to us yeah. ASAP. Okay. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. So if you like, well, Lexa is going to be a little bit heavier, but there's a bread um, that they eat with Ethiopian food. Well, you actually use it to eat with because you use your hands called yeah. injera and it's like a spongy flatbread. Yes. I actually yes. love it. There's a mutual friend of ours, Ronnie Rock, that hates it. She hates that stuff. Okay. <laughs> so, you know how much, you know how much she travels and stuff, but she, yes. she kind of e eats her way through her travels as well. And, um, we were talking one night about it and she's like, yeah, I can't stand it. And I was like, oh, it's so good. I was, I was reading the description of it bef um, and when I saw that it was like fermented something, I'm like, well, is it like a sourdough or is it like, I don't know. Mm, I, I, a, won't, I won't pass judgment until I That's a good, this, so. it's a good question. Like, no, that's a great question because there are different kinds of ferments and they're not all yeah. sour, if that makes sense. Like mm -hmm. potato bread is made by fermenting that like potato base. And technically, mm -hmm. like focaccia is made by fermenting that first sponge, that dough, mm -hmm. and, and and it has yeast. And so, yeah, that's totally valid. I don't think it's a sour sourdough, though. So, yeah. Yeah. It's definitely an experience, though. Yeah. You should let me know yeah. if you can try it. I will do that. I will do that. Most definitely. So can I ask you guys, I'd love to know what Please. inspired you uh, to become a chef? Melissa, go ahead. Yeah, Steven. <laughs> <laughs> do you want the real reason or do you want the um do you want the eloquent I want the response. real reason. You can make it eloquent, Steven. <laughs> I honestly, in all fairness, I grew up eating. I loved eating. Um I can remember senior year, I had no clue what I wanted to do. And a friend of mine said, Well, I'm gonna go to culinary school, you know, while be playing with food and this and that. And I was like, sign me up. And uh, I figured, you know, I love, I love to eat. I love to make people happy. Um, it was very uh, superficial reasons. But when I really dissected as to why I went into culinary school, it's because I like to make people happy. Um, I really like the hospitality part of it. You know, someone's coming to you for the experience, for the story. And, um, you know, for me, that's just what it was. So I'm combining, you know, like the superficial reason or the, the real reason and the, you know, the eloquent reason. But mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I figured people are going to pay good money for food and this and that. And when I found out, you know, like cooking's more about passion, it totally made sense to me. It took me years to realize that. 
<laughs> Melissa, take it away. Yeah. <laughs> it's my turn. Right. Um, <clears throat> so my reasons are a little bit of the same. Um, I, I watched my grandmother cook, cook for us and the rest of the family. And I just thought that was, that was how I wanted to serve people as well. Um, but also I like to eat and it's one of those businesses where you're like, you know, what are the, what are the kind of like steadfast things? Well, everybody has to pay taxes. So you could do that. Right. And everybody is born and dies. So you could do either one of those, but you know, it's like also everybody has to eat. Um, and mm -hmm. I felt, I wasn't thinking about job security when I was like, you know, 18 or whatever, but I loved cooking from the time that I could, I could reach the stove. Um, and I always wanted to be everybody's business and be able to help with everything. So whatever, whatever it was, I wanted to be in the middle of it and the kitchen being it. So that's, that's nice. it. That's, and that's the, the, the whole rest of the story, right? <laughs> Here we are. The rest is history. Here yes. we are. Do you ever get, uh, like, watch shows on TV that are about cooking? Like, you know, I, one that I watched recently was The Bear and I... Oh. Do do you go? Is that so cringe to you, or is it a very, um, you is know, it like cathartic or like sometimes yeah. when I watch yeah. you know, medical things, I have to roll my eyes because it's not real. So not real. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. So, Melissa, Steve. go ahead. Steve, no, I went first. No, yeah, I've, like, I've watched the bear. Yeah, Steve, calm down. Oh, I just want to see if you watched it or not. <laughs> yeah, I watched the bear. Yeah. Yes, I watched the bear, but I have to know. Do you guys like Sydney? I hate her. I can't stand her. She's the worst. Do you like her? <laughs> she she I, seems to have like a lot of anxiety. Sometimes. Indeed. Yeah. I watched that entire show with I remove myself because it's very bittersweet. Because yes, it can be intense like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's not always just high pressure, high anxiety. It's not always zero to hundred. Like, you know, I'm sure in restaurants and other restaurants, yes, it is. But I never had that experience. I had experiences where we were real busy, but it never felt like that. Does that make sense? The way that they build mm -hmm. up um, the tension during dinner service, I never had those feelings. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so even though the bear does, they did their homework with a lot of really good restaurants, French Laundry, Alinea, um, they've got all sorts of different techniques and they show things like that. Yes, there's a lot of passion, but at the same time, like I feel like the main guy, uh, what's his name, Jeremy? Uh, Alan White. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like he takes it to a whole nother level of mm -hmm. just anxiety and tension and stress and things like that you know but that's what it's supposed to do that's what a show like mm -hmm. that does you know mm -hmm. what about you melissa so I, I think i've watched it three times through all of it um it stresses me out but i think that's by design like this story yeah. is so good um that you're supposed to kind of feel like you're in it and have i ever been that stressed out in a restaurant yes and i've worked and a couple of places that made me want to quit being a chef altogether because they were so toxic and so stressful. And, but I was younger and I also didn't have any tools in my toolbox to like deal with that kind of anxiety and stress either. So I just didn't have any like healthy coping mechanisms. But when I watch it, I laugh and I cry and I rejoice and I, I'm excited every time they open it. And, you know, like it, it's this roller coaster of emotions. Um, I like him, but I've worked with plenty of hens that would have been fired already. Um, and I think, and then Sydney annoys the crap out of me. <laughs> it's not that it's not because she has anxiety, like so do I. Um, but I, you know, and sometimes anxiety is just your body's way of telling you like something's not right. You know, like it's mm -hmm. kind of your first line of defense that there's nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not like a right or wrong. Um, it's no judgment for anybody who, who deals with it. You know, I think the overwhelming majority of people do, whether they want to admit it or not. But I think in the story, I'm just get irritated with her because she won't, she doesn't know the right times to advocate for herself. And, and then she tries to put him in his place when it's not appropriate. I'm just like, shut up. Just say yes, chef and shut up. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It just bugs me. But 
Yes, I watch things like that all the time. I don't. I haven't watched the Food Network in quite some time because it's not really. It's all reality shows and stuff, but it's not like real cooking. Not like what. Not like in my day. Like. When I was <laughs> so, Angela, what kind of shows do you watch when it comes to food? Um, I've watched that one before, and mm -hmm. I used to kind of really get into the the food, like chopped and yes. top stuff and things like that. Uh -huh. but, um, yeah, it's been a while since I've had those. I don't watch a whole lot of TV. I kind of mm -hmm. go back to my like comfort shows. <laughs> yeah, because they just seem yeah. to be better than new things I can find right now. Uh, you know. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say it's amazing because a lot of people tell me you must keep up with Chopped and Top Chef and this and that. And I don't watch stuff like that. You know, I after a long day of work, even when I was in restaurants, I just wanted to watch mindless TV where I could just zone out. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And so uh, I do have friends that were into all that stuff. I even had a friend who was on uh, Chopped. I've had a couple friends on Chopped and one of them didn't win. One of them won. And I watched those episodes because i want to support them but otherwise i don't know i can't watch stuff like that my my comfort viewing when it comes to food always ends up being like the bbc gordon ramsay shows so like he's very um docile and very calm or like master chef junior where he's like so yeah. sweet i didn't know that he had the ability to be calm. <clears throat> yeah they, <laughs> I, they just punch up his personality it's like all for american tv because they think that's what we want uh, yeah. <laughs> and but Jamie Oliver was like my first, you know, British food TV crush, you know, <laughs> as it as it were. And I love, you know, he and Tyler Florence. They kind of make they make food the way it is in my dreams. I don't know if I'll ever be able to do it like they do, but they the way that they use flavors is just like I can just zone out and watch that all day. The same way that I can watch, you know, Gilmore Girls for the fiftieth time through. You know what I mean? Like I could just. Mm -hmm. sit I could just sit mindlessly, but I could do something else, right? Like, like playing solitaire on my phone or do house cleaning or whatever, but always having it on the background. Like that's yeah. my comfort viewing for sure. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So is there any kind of dishes that you would like to try or that you've seen on social media, on TV that you're, that you think to yourself, I just got to make this. Hmm. That's a good question. I don't know the answer. <laughs> I was gonna say I'm asking okay. all the loaded questions here. You know, I feel <laughs> like that. You know. <laughs> um. Hmm. No, I'm not sure. You might have to come back to me on that one. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, like I I see stuff, you know, from time to time, and you know, everything always looks really good whenever I see stuff on uh, social media and the internet and even TV and things like that. I'm always inspired by different things. And I try to put my twist on stuff. Ha, you know, so that's why I'm asking, like, is there, have you seen anything where you're like, I got to try this. I got to put my twist on it. I wonder what it's like to cook stuff or like this and this and that, you know? Um, yeah, I'm not really sure, but I do <laughs> like, I do like watching this cute little, uh, it's like cooking with Levi, this dad and son, and, and he's, as his ki kid has been a baby through, now he's like three or four years old, and now uh -huh. he's like helping in the kitchen. I think that's just really fun to, Aww. that, you know, you don't have to dumb a kid's palate down. You can just like cook them good yeah. food, and they, and he's, this little kid is just so cute when he's like trying all these things, and Aww. yeah, it's been, it's a fun thing I to see on Instagram. Yeah. I love that. And I, I agree with that. I think, you know, you can, I have, don't have children and I wouldn't tell anybody how to parent, but I think it's easier than people think to kind of introduce, you know, foods and a, a baby's, yeah. a baby's and toddlers and small children's brains. I do remember learning in our nutrition course in culinary school that it, sometimes it takes like 15 different times to expose mm -hmm. a child to a new food before they will. So. A lot of patience, although, apparently. <laughs> although I'm going to keep circling back to your sweet potato hash with blueberries because that just sounds amazing. It really does. You're going to have to share that recipe with us for real. I, okay, I can do that. Yes. It was a, it was a it was a whole thirty recipe that I tried. Ooh, yeah. and done that in the past, and 
Yeah. I might I might reference that one more time in this episode. I apologize, but I'm just being honest. <laughs> hey, cuz I have not stopped thinking good. about it since you mentioned it. Yeah. All right. Uh, meanwhile, I ha I had a bowl of Cheerios today, Angela, like <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Well, all I all I had today was oatmeal, but later early, yeah. food, that's what I was. What do you put in your oatmeal? Um, I like just a little brown sugar and um, uh, raisins. Ooh, Steve, you like raisins? I'll eat raisins. Yeah. I don't go out of my way, but if they're there, I will eat them. I don't mind them. Nice. Yeah. Um, Angela, have you ever tried or seen savory oatmeal? No, I haven't. What would be the like the spice in a savory oatmeal? So well, you could totally make them. Oh, I apologize. Go ahead, mm -hmm. Melissa. Well, I was just gonna say the one time that I made savory oatmeal and it turned out I just didn't have the commitment to follow through and like keep doing it. But I was like, yeah, this was a fun thing. Um, I did like uh, see like an um, Asian. It was of the Asian persuasion. So I like sprinkled like furikake and toasted sesame seeds and a little ginger and soy. And then I did like two over easy eggs on top with like um, green onions. So the, in this case, the oatmeal was kind of like rice. Oh, okay. It was interesting. It was definitely, the texture is not like, I don't know, you know, <laughs> like yeah. on the texture, but yeah. So. And I've done them before almost like a risotto. So yeah, I was going to say just like a rice, you know, where you, you, you start with like a, plain you know steel cut out uh oak and you cook them just like you would risotto and it comes out really good too so i i agree with you like whenever it comes to oats and oatmeal like you think sweeter but mm -hmm. you know you can also go the savory route you know yeah yeah i always used to like i would dip my bacon in, in syrup i always still do like at breakfast time and so I always like to toy with the idea of like putting maple syrup and bacon and eggs on top of oatmeal. But oh, <laughs> you know, I'm like, it's just, it's at this point, it's just like a runny pancake and I eat all those things together anyway. So like, <laughs> why, why not? I don't know. Um, Steven, do you actually like the texture of still cut oats or you just, you like the idea? Uh, a little bit of both. Uh, you know, I think that they do have a different texture and you, it takes a little bit longer, you know, to, to cook them down. The but obviously, yeah, I, the very first time I had them, I thought this is not worth it. But then I can't after wait 45 minutes for breakfast. Yeah. Life but to live. After a couple times of having them, you know, they've grown on me. I don't eat them all the time. It's been years since I've had steel cut oats, but yes. And I, I do rather. What enjoy about them. you? Do you do you have you ever used the steel cut oats before? Or do you just um, use like rolled oats? I have, but I typically use rolled oats when I yeah. have oatmeal. So I don't like to work that hard for my food. <laughs> and it's a lot of chewing too so i just don't i just don't so Lip. speaking Texture of breakfast yeah it, it, is it definitely is. so what's your favorite meal breakfast lunch or dinner how about breakfast for dinner yes <laughs> B you B stole B my heart B B yes yeah <laughs> i love it brinner or brinner as i call brenner. it mm -hmm. yeah what do you enjoy for brinner um, I like eggs a lot. Yeah. I make scrambled eggs or this, I have been making a, like an egg bake with cottage cheese and eggs. Cause I, I've made it so many times. I don't, don't even have to, you know, look at what the recipe, although this morning I forgot to put the flour in. So I don't know. <laughs> oh, no. I made it, I made it for like meal prepping for yeah uh -huh. work this week. So we'll have to see if it turned out without the flour in it. But does it make its own crust when you do that? Or does it, is it just, you think it just holds up or sets up better? Maybe the flour? I think that... I've, I think I've, well, I've always put it in because it was in the recipe, but mm -hmm. I've, yeah, it's mm -hmm. not, there's a lot of flour. It was just a little bit. So well, what mm -hmm. else, what else goes in there? Uh, and usually um, Monterey Jack cheese, but I didn't have that. So I just used the mozzarella that I had in the fridge. So yeah. Can't go wrong with mozzarella. You like cottage nice. cheese? You don't mind that texture in there? It, well, because when you bake it, it doesn't it doesn't yeah. have that typical cottage cheese texture. But I yeah. I do it also enjoy cottage yeah. cheese. Nice when it when yeah. it calls for a moment. I like it. I like it too. It's a good way to add protein to like quiche. Yeah, 
Um, yeah. And I always use it for lasagna because I'm cheap and I refuse to pay for ricotta, even though I know they're not, <laughs> they're not remotely the same, but I'm just like, nope, yes. not, you're not getting my $5 for this eight ounces of ricotta. <laughs> nope. That's how you just blend up your ricotta and it's a scam. You just lie to yourself. This <laughs> yes. is it's a but... scam. <laughs> ricotta cheese is a scam. So, what's your favorite, I guess, comfort food, Angela? Um. Well, I probably have to come back to that mac and cheese. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. nice. That's a pretty standard one. That's always a winner, though. I, yeah. I kind of can see, I can see that totally. Yeah, it's it's hard to go wrong with mac and cheese. Um, a couple times in the last maybe two or three weeks, I've had Chick Fil A. There's one right next to our our new building, uh, where the restaurant is opening. And um, one of the things I like to do there is get the grilled nuggets and the and toss them in buffalo sauce, like in the container, like shake it up, and then put it on top of their macaroni and cheese. Like that's oh. a winner. <laughs> so yeah, that's good. good. I know. I gotta. I can't. Almost can't have mac and cheese without buffalo something. So, I might have a problem. But yeah, you all are <laughs> going to be their best customers. For real, I feel. For real. I have to well, drive yeah. sixty miles for a Chick Fil A. So, oh. Oh. You can cry for me. Have you reached out to FEMA? Because it sounds serious. <laughs> <laughs> sixty miles one way. Yes. Okay, well, it's not that good. I, gas live, costs yeah, a lot. I live in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> gas costs a lot. Wow. Is, is there a standout restaurant in, in town where you are? Um, we've got a couple good Mexican restaurants. Um, I like uh, Lupita's event. There's, I'm sure okay. that there's no, uh, no, <laughs> no listeners in, in my little sphere of the world, but... That's do, you, I like. do you mind sharing where it is exactly? I, you, oh. might be, you might get mobbed by fans after this. But. Now I'm going to be looking, <laughs> Googling it. I live in Worthington, Minnesota, uh, which is the turkey capital of the world. What? We, we, that's just our, you know, every little Minnesota town has their claim to fame. And my great grandfather actually brought it to our town years and years ago. He was on some business trip in, in Texas and came back and said, hey, there's this town in in texas called cuero and they've got this uh turkey mm -hmm. festival and yeah we have a lot of turkey industry so we should too and now that has led to uh uh in september in minnesota and then in october is nice. the other half of the festival and humans chase turkeys down main street in both towns that sounds like fun. okay so that must be the um, there is a there is a really old episode of South Park where they do the same thing, so maybe that's like what it's maybe, based on. Yeah, they must have got their inspiration <laughs> from our our little lovely so, little festivals. <laughs> I love that. I love that so much. Okay, <laughs> I am. I turkey. just googled Lupitas, and it looks really good. A lot, a lot of the. Uh, it sounds like there's a lot of dairy there, like cheeses and things like that. Yeah. And I would be all about it. So it sounds like. We need to make a field trip out there. Maybe. Just to go All check right. it out. Yeah. <laughs> Worthington, Minnesota. Done. Day. Day. <laughs> they've got good reviews. The pictures look great too. Yeah. Oh, Love it. their margaritas, their molcajetes. Oh my goodness. I better stop. I'm full as it is, but <laughs> that looks good. I still need to eat dinner. So now you're kind of making me want Mexican food. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we had for uh, brunch today. So, yeah. Yes. You can never go wrong with good Mexican food. Mm -mm. Angela, what's your go-to order at Lupita's? Um, I, they ha oh, I can't remember what it's, I think it's the pollo a la crema. And mm -hmm. it's got the some sautéed vegetables and I think mushrooms in it too. Like I said, I love mushrooms um with this this yeah and then of course your standard rice and beans with it but yeah that's a good one are nice. you one of those people that when you go out to eat do you have a something that you order at every single place or do you try something new i have my favorites but i'm willing to branch out and try stuff mm -hmm. yeah. try new things too nice 
Nice. Well, Angela and I talked a little bit about um, while we were talking about you coming on, uh, we were talking about uh, how kind of regular home home cooks as yourself can connect with chefs. So I wonder if you had like a burning questions about maybe something you didn't know how to cook or maybe a food you'd never seen or tried. Um, hmm. No pressure. Well, maybe maybe <laughs> we should talk about the octopus because if I was oh, if I was ever going to try, <laughs> I don't know if I would probably be safer to like go and try it cooked by you know a professional. But if I was going to attempt something like that on my own, mm. like what is something you would need to know about it? Um, I would say that it would be a little bit of a chewier texture if it's done right. If it's not done right, it's going to be very rubbery, if that makes sense. So every time I make octopus, I always like to uh, braise it down for about 30, 45 minutes on a low, low boil. And then I like to grill it personally. But, you know, everyone's got their own way of doing it. This is what works for me. And that's what I like. I don't know, Melissa, what about you? Um, so every time I've ever made octopus, it's been ceviche. So um, octopus is one of those things, Angela, where it's like you've got like three seconds or 30 minutes. There's nothing in between because it'll turn into a rubber band. Um, mm -hmm. And so um, I like to cut mine up and put it with pico de gallo and lime juice and a lot of jalapenos and serve it with mm -hmm. crackers. And that's what I do with it. Let, can we let it sit in the fridge for like, I don't know, four hours, six hours? So That sounds yeah. interesting. I kind of like Melissa's... <laughs> Yeah, I win, Steven. Kind of wins out on that one. We'll try. It. I mean, yeah, it, like I said, and whenever I do mine, like I'll do uh, sautéed onions, I'll do a little bit of uh, guacamole, I'll do a little salsa, things like that, and mm -hmm. you know, I make it into a taco. Personally, I haven't had it like ceviche style because too often I've had it a couple times, and again, for me, every time I've had it, it's just been that overcook, you know. But mm -hmm. yeah. again, to each their own. I would I would recommend trying it somewhere first. And then recreating. Oh it. yeah, yeah. Until yeah. you spend, you're like you, you don't want to spend the money and then get it home and then be like, oh, this is terrible. <laughs> That's That's idea. Yeah. <laughs> um. Do you guys have like, uh, if you could recommend like three gadgets that a home cook should have? Not like thousands of dollars worth of gadgets, of course, but just like like three things that are good to have in your home kitchen. Hmm. Yeah. I, a ahead. great knife for starters, a great sharp knife that is the size you prefer, that is you feel comfortable using so that you're safe. A good sharp knife. Mm -hmm. So something something that's easy to wash, something that's easy to store. You don't have to break the bank. There's plenty of affordable ones out there, but I think that's step one. Good good knife and a cutting board. We're gonna put those as one as one item. Yeah. Good knife and yeah. a cutting board. So gadget, Steve. Oh, gadgets. Um, I was going to kind of, I was thinking the same thing. It's funny because we were just talking about that last night too, you know. We just said, we had just recorded yesterday and it, it was like a whole hour on gadgets and tools. So fun times. I would say, yeah, definitely a good cutting board, a good knife, uh, um, a good knife and cutting board. I would also say a good saute pan. Um, one of the gadgets I like that's an actual gadget, you know, is a good blender as well. I don't really use food processors. I don't really use um, mixers, things like that. But if I have a good blender, I'm usually pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to think about the last time I used, probably I have to say spice grinder and you can do coffee in it as well. Yeah. So that's probably the thing that gets the most use in my kitchen besides Kind of like just the hand tools, but like a gadget would be that. Um, spice grinder. Spice grinder. Yep. Okay. Yep. It's basically okay. a coffee I grinder. Yeah. Yep. I think I have one. <laughs> oh, and my all time favorite, an air fryer, by the way. Yes. I love, I love my air fryer. <laughs> What's your favorite Me thing too. to make in the air fryer, Angela? Um, I just did some really any kind of green vegetable, like my green beans, I'll throw in mm -hmm. there, Brussels sprouts. Really? I, the broccoli, I didn't, I wasn't a fan of the broccoli that the other week that I did that, but yeah. Was it the texture or like, did it 
the florets got brown too fast? I, or? I think um, I think they were too brown. Yeah. Yeah, I know that. I know that feeling. Okay. It's kind of weird in there. I didn't like it either. Um, yeah. Admittedly, I use frozen broccoli quite a bit, and I I will buy the cuts instead of the florets. So there's mm -hmm. kind of like a mixture of textures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but I but I always end up steaming. It. So. I know it's kind of it's kind of lame, but yeah. About that. <laughs> You're what? I'm always weary about using you know like the florets and steaming them and stuff like that. You know, yeah, it's like I have a ton of flavor to it. You know, yeah. Well, that's where the cheese sauce comes in. <laughs> <laughs> I always go just very basic, so I'm like, ah, why didn't I throw extra seasoning on this? You know, but that's just me. Yeah, that's where the cheese sauce comes in. Um, I think. But really the game changer for me with that air fryer is just chicken nuggets. I don't have to use oil. Yeah. I don't have to get out of the pot. I don't have to make a mess. It tastes really good. <laughs> as, huh? as pedestrian as it sounds, like that's kind of my favorite thing to use the air fryer for <laughs> is fried, frozen fried items. <laughs> so yeah. Mine, mine yeah. has a, a food dehydrator setting on it that I keep thinking that nice. could be interesting to try. You're going to make jerky? Oh. I, I could do that. I could do make some jerky. You can make fruit leather in the dehydrator. Have you seen that hack on TikTok? No. You can, you can put unsweetened applesauce on the dehydrator tray and it just turns into apple fruit leather and it's just one ingredient. Like, done. 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 I have some applesauce. I can yes. lift that right up. <laughs> it's like an un, it's like a, a, a adult fruit roll up. <laughs> that sounds really good, actually. <laughs> so I think yeah, air fryer has that setting too. I'm gonna try that too. Yeah, I haven't list. messed with any of the settings. I know it has all the buttons for all the things, but I just, I don't know. I just lost interest. I think I just set it to 350 for whatever <laughs> it is and a timer. <laughs> so Angela, expectation versus reality how did you feel about coming on to the podcast versus actually talking to us and you know having a fun chat with us i i was a little nervous cuz i've never been on a podcast before but this has been this has been pretty fun got to admit yeah do you like, do you like i told you we don't, we don't prepare too much so right. no no pressure <laughs> do you know anyone in the culinary field who's worked in restaurants and things like that uh, another, uh, you, you, now I know you and Melissa, that's it. <laughs> Dang. All right. Cool. Yeah. The last thing we wanted, I mean, we didn't, we don't want people to think, you know, like we're, uh, really full of ourselves or things like that. We're down to earth. We love food mm -hmm. and we really just love, um, having a good conversation about food or gadgets or whatever the case is, you know? And so I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that yeah. everything's you know, good. I mean, it's, it's kind of like the whole reason this podcast exists is it's like it says in the intro, like I want, I want everybody to feel comfortable. There shouldn't be barriers to entry for people loving food and cooking. You know, you don't have to have yeah. a title. You don't have to have a degree. You, you didn't have to work in the business. Like everybody should just be in the kitchen, like figuring out what they like mm -hmm. having fun, and doing what they love and having fun. So, yeah. Yeah. You're like, you're literally here illustrating the entire reason the podcast exists. So kudos to you. There. My, my work <laughs> is you. done. Your work is done. <laughs> your, your work is almost done. I Y'all got to get a Chick-fil-A up there. I don't know who you call them. <laughs> um, <just laughs> well, yeah. There's When you live in a tiny town, there's not many options. I would love to have some more, you know. Something is there a Walmart in your town? There is a Walmart. So there should be a Chick-fil-A. You're yeah. on the map. <laughs> You're definitely on the map. It's, We're going to work on that. Okay. It Melissa like and I will work on that. Kind of adjacent to one another. Mm -hmm. um, in Texas, it they was are. a Panda Express. Um, those things were everywhere a Walmart was. So, <laughs> What's the holdup, Worthington, Minnesota? I don't know. Right. <laughs> Angela, do you have it? I mean... Maybe you're better than I am and you don't eat fast food often, but do you have a favorite? Um, I I would say Culver's, mm -hmm. which again, I would have to drive 60 miles for, but. Like, oh my God. <laughs> so in, in town, I would probably say Arby's. I like those little, um, 
chicken wrap things that they have yeah Mm -hmm. arby's is so good yeah super good so is like can't argue with that is chick-fil-a like 60 miles one way and then and then the other one's like the other way or no it's oh they're both in the same direction yeah so whenever i have you know shopping to do or medical appointments that's where my most of my doctoring and stuff is then i go get some chick-fil-a <laughs> <laughs> i don't know yeah. yeah the culver's cheese curds are are one of my comfort so, foods. do you do you get the butter burger ever oh yeah so do you ever like open the butter burger and put the curds on it that's my move I have it. I, sometimes <laughs> I think they make like a giant, like just one giant curd to put on there that I, I have heard of, but I've I haven't ever tried it. I, well, I like to just have them. That's amazing. Size. Well, yeah, for sure. I, I understand. <laughs> Cheese curds are so much fun. They squeak yeah. when you eat them. Yeah, they are. Yeah, and they're delicious. <laughs> I agree. I love that. So yeah, buddy. <laughs> Well, I think you have any more questions for us, Angela? I don't want to cut you off. Um, I think we we covered all my questions. So I want your first yeah. podcast guest experience to be everything you thought it would be. Everything and more. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for coming on today. Yeah, thanks for I having had, me. I think it's so much fun that somebody, you know, like when you reached out, I was like, hi, you know, I really hadn't thought of somebody just like wanting to be on. <laughs> Like, you know, like somebody just listens to it. And so I was like, oh, this is like really special. Um, And then chef schedules being what they are, it took forever. So sorry about that, but it is what it is. Okay. (laughs) Anyhow, well, Angela, are you cooking anything this week? You made that egg bake. That was your meal prep. Anything else? That's the only thing I've thought to make yet. I'm not sure what else is on the... I don't think I'll be trying octopus quite yet. <laughs> probably, probably not. Well, let us week. know when you do. We'll okay. walk you through it. Okay. Yeah, probably not this week. What about you, Steve? Uh, so my wife's birthday is on Tuesday, Yay. and we will be doing some short ribs, but we're going to do them Hasselbeck style, where we uh, stuff them with potatoes, things like that. And I've seen it, so I got to try it now. But like bone in? No. Yeah, bone in totally, totally gonna- bone in. You're going to slice it down to the bone and put slices of potatoes inside? Yeah, so so what I saw is, you know, you slice them and whatnot, and then you cook them for a couple hours. You get them to about, like, 165 and start to stuff them with, like, potato slices and then continue to cook them till they're, like, 200. So then you get to cut them into, like, individual uh, dino ribs, if you will, or chuck ribs. And uh, then you have, like, a meat and potatoes all in one, you know? That's crazy. Well, you have to take pictures. I'm I'm interested to see how that turns out. We're gonna um, we're gonna film it as well, and then we're gonna learn together because I've never done that. So I think it gets into the 70s here. So I am gonna do beef stew and cornbread. That's what I'm gonna do. Nice. I like the it. seven the seventies burr as Angela rolls her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> For her, that's a heat wave. For us, there's parkas that are coming out. We're freezing. Uh, yeah, it's the hoodie. It's hoodie season is upon us. Well, Angela, it was awesome having you on. Thank you so much for listening and for supporting the show. So, and you'll have to come back. So, Thank you. we have to. You'll have to go like chase a turkey and take pictures and um, make lefsa and everything else, and then like come back on. So, <laughs> all right. We'll see you later. Bye. 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 <laughs>